Hey, what's going on there, folks? Good evening. It is the Earthmaster back here on this uh, July 3rd, 2023 date, about 9.40 p.m. here, Central Time, Cali or the, uh, I was going to say California, but still in Texas. Uh, latest activity here on the map shows some movement out around the uh, China area. Looks like Western China, 4.6 coming in within the last hour, 9 kilometers deep. We did see a little bit of movement up here further to the northeast. Um, just a couple hours ago, so slight elevated activity here uh, north of this plate boundary. Also, well off into the uh, Caspian Sea, it looks like. We've seen a uh, 5.4 coming in earlier this afternoon. It's been a little while since we've seen any movement up here. Uh, a look at historical data shows, um, let's see what we have. A little bit of deeper movement quakes here in the vicinity of today's quake. Uh, looks like there has been uh, a handful of earthquakes here into the sea region. Nothing big, uh, at least according to the um, USGS map. But uh, either way, 5.4 coming in 60, about 60 kilometers deep into the uh, Caspian Sea area. The Atlantic Ocean, fairly calm and clear. One earthquake here from yesterday around the Greenland Sea. Nothing else being reported across the area. Uh, South America, about the same. Although we did see one further earthquake here into the Chile area, just offshore, it looks like about 31 kilometers deep here uh, for a 4.2. Now further up into the Puerto Rico area, got the typical swarming kicking back up here, southwestern edge of Puerto Rico, about 16 earthquakes of various magnitudes, including a 4.2 earlier this morning in that mix of earthquake activity. Across the uh, states here, let's see what we got going on for the west coast. A little bit of movement here at the Gorda Plate, the southern end of the Gorda Plate, where it meets the Pacific Plate. Gorda Plate, Pacific Plate, down south. 4.0 earlier this afternoon, about 26 kilometers deep. Uh, also, we did see some activity prior to that, 2.2, a little bit further to the uh, east here along the plate boundary. So slight elevated activity here over the California region over the last couple days. Now I know, let's go over here to the trimmer map. I know we've seen a little bit of uh, elevated trimmer down here. Even today it looks like uh, adding to some strain and stress out here along the uh, areas that have the earthquake activity today. Uh, now yesterday we had, let's see what we had, nothing. We had zip zero. Uh, one of these days we did have somewhat of an elevated movement. There we go, about 149 epicenters of trimmer. A couple days ago here so elevated trimmer activity adding to increasing strain out here along the plate boundary of course Cascadia megathrust area sits just offshore uh, let's see the Bay Area in California fairly quiet um, let's see what we got for the rest of the state here I don't think we got anything above 2.5 down here maybe Redlands area looks like north of Riverside outside of Riverside here just on the Pacific side of the plate boundary, that 2.5 coming in this afternoon. Uh, aside from that, mostly smaller microquake activity across the region here today. A little bit of movement uh, in the Ridgecrest area. Um, throughout the rest of the Great Basin and the Intermountain West areas, very small minor activity. Yellowstone National Park not showing anything. I did pull this up just to double check, and uh, you know I don't I don't want people to get fooled or um, worried about this signature showing up out here that's uh, showing up in a good portion of the park that's not earthquake activity one could confuse it with magma movement uh, but it's not I was just checking out the uh, data up here this is Yellowstone National Park here northwestern Wyoming uh, if we go back the last uh, six hours here you'll see a, a pretty good amount of thunderstorm activity kicking up here in the Yellowstone area uh, there's West Yellowstone uh, this general area right here just uh, cluttered with a lot of earthquake activity or uh, uh, excuse me storms a lot of thunderstorm activity here uh, and more so in this time zone right here in this time frame we've seen the first wave come through second wave come through that's what thunderstorm activity does to seismograph stations here and you can see it all across a broad area so don't let anyone fool you that that's magma moving all right moving on here past the nonsense <laughs> All about the facts. Uh, let's see what else we got here across the rest of the states. A little bit of movement here in Texas. 
haven't really felt any earthquake activity. I did get a chance, of course, to look at the uh, Permian Basin out here. A lot of oil fields all over the place. I'm going to cover that a little bit more uh, in an update uh, in the probably within the within a week. Kind of chat about that whole area. Uh, either way, a little bit of activity here southeast of Midland. I uh, was just out there yesterday, and there's oil fields literally all over the place, folks. I'm not even joking. Um, wastewater disposal ponds as well. Uh, big time, huge operations ongoing out there. Got 3.0 coming into that area today. Oklahoma, a little spotty activity as well. Into the big island of Hawaii. We got uh, movement across the Pahala area, very typical here. I don't think we've seen any uh, uh, adjustments there across the uh, Kilauea Volcano. Of course, they downgraded that there recently. Uh, let's go to the hands and notification system here on volcanoes. Uh, pretty cool feature. You can check out many different um, agent. Well, it's an agency here, USGS, but many different areas that they cover. HVO, of course, is going to be the uh, Hawaiian Volcano Observatory. This update was put out, well, a couple days ago. Nothing's changed, folks. Um, things have been downgraded there at the Kilauea Volcano, so they're not really uh, putting out any daily updates. But we'll continue to check on that uh, for any you know future eruptions here, because no doubt that will uh, happen again. Uh, let's see, there's the Alaska region here, uh, mostly smaller microquake activity. We did have one outside of Anchorage here, a 4.6 that was felt in the area. I'll show you guys the did you feel it responses. Of course, Anchorage, a fairly large city up there, it was up there a couple years ago. Beautiful area. Uh, mostly light to maybe some potential moderate shaking here from uh, that four pointer that kicked off earlier uh, this morning. You can see quite a few folks there. Uh, reporting that earthquake. Now it looks like, let's go back here, looks like that did occur. There's a couple different fault systems that run through here. Of course a major uh, subduction zone area. That earthquake 4.6 coming in about 28 kilometers deep so just kind of keep an eye on it. Uh, let's see what we got here for, what we got going on out here in Nevada south of uh, Alamo 2.6 within the last hour let me see here a little bit of activity up here around Mina as well all right let's check out the solar weather activity a little bit calmer here it looks like in the last 24 hours following that uh, large X flare that kicked off from sunspot number 3354 which is now the latest imagery much further out here along the northwestern uh, limb of the sun still looks pretty complex could pose a uh, little bit more hazard for some future flaring as uh, far as the earth facing side of the sun and what's looking at us um, I think right now there's this growing sunspot region down here that we got to watch and also it looks like maybe a newer sunspot region that's starting to pop up uh, so things getting a little active that's going to be 3359 this was yesterday or maybe this morning it has rapidly evolved that's going to be this area right here along with this sunspot region uh, which is uh looks like that may be 3355 or 3356 i believe 3356 looks like that's the one that's taken over this area Either way, we'll continue to watch that for some solar flare uh, possibilities. Looks like right now, 99% chance for a C flare, M flare at 65. X flare has been elevated to 25. Of course, that's due mainly to that massive sunspot region here. It looks like it is currently flaring. Um, nothing big yet, but it, it does harbor some potential for some further X flares. Uh, but that will not be earth directed due to the position there on the sun facing away from us. Uh, let's see here. No major CMEs have been produced, so therefore things are pretty quiet there on the Aurora forecast. Uh, Storm Prediction Center, not a whole lot going on here in Texas. Uh, the current day outlook looks like uh, mostly up into the uh, South Dakota region, into portions of Wyoming as well. That's the uh, tornado threat, mostly some wind and hail events as uh, far as tomorrow goes. 
Looks like that's going to dip down into portions of Kansas and Nebraska. Here in Texas, taking a little break it looks like. Uh, there's some thunderstorm activity out here, but nothing of severe levels. Um, so we'll continue to watch this. It looks like maybe day four there's a threat for some uh, severe weather stretching down into portions of the panhandle here in Texas. Uh, we'll kind of keep an eye on that and see how that evolves. All right, uh, in the meantime, folks, uh, let's see what we got here. I do like to check out the uh, tropical tidbits here and see what we got as far as any long-term models out here. Um, let's go over here to the uh, symbol. High pressure, of course, going to be in the orange, darker orange, indicating the most, um, the strongest area of the high pressure ridging. Low pressure going to be troughs right here uh, in the blue. So we're just going to go ahead and scoot this into the future. Um, see what we have playing out. Looks like a little cooler spell kicking in for California. I know they've been dealing with quite a bit of heat. And luckily I haven't been out there. I've, I've dodged the heat. Um, which is good because it, uh, it was cooking out there. But either way it looks like uh, here in a couple days things will cool down. And uh, see what's behind that. I don't see any major setups here of extreme temperatures along the west coast. This is a ways out though, so looks like there may be a trough here, some cooler temperatures, um, trying to work their way into the Pacific Northwest. But uh, the rest of the country, well, looks like some cool spelling or cool weather, cooler than average uh, for portions around the Great Lakes and the eastern coast over here. As uh, far as hurricanes go, I don't believe we got any um, activity spinning up yet in the Gulf. Uh, let's go ahead and put this into motion here and see. Kind of hard to see here. There we go. Um, not a whole lot of development, at least in the Gulf area. The Atlantic may be a different story, but... Uh, yeah, it's kind of odd. Of course, still a little early. We will be, uh, you know, reaching into that hurricane season. All right, well, I am going to jump off here. There's a little hurricane down here in the uh, Pacific. Uh, typical, some El Nino patterns. All right, folks, I'm going to jump off here. Have a good night. Uh, please stay safe out there. Missy Mimi's is right here. We're just kind of we're just kind of chillaxing and uh, recovering from the past couple days of storm chasing out here. Uh, last night was a dandy, as far as lightning shows, but uh, didn't have a whole lot of data out there in, in uh, western Texas. Uh, but it was pretty cool. I got to see a lot of stuff: some heavy rain and lightning and whatnot. Uh, a couple wall clouds, but no major, no no tornadoes out there, which is good. Um, alrighty, we're out of here. Have yourself a wonderful night. And tomorrow, of course, is 4th of July. We will be back here early this morning with an up or early tomorrow morning uh, with an update. Please stay safe out there on this July 4th. Tomorrow, of course, um, you know, uh, I think we all know how to be safe, right? But uh, let's definitely keep all of our fingers and, <laughs> and no fires out there. Don't need no major fire started because of uh, fireworks. Have a good one. We'll catch you guys back here tomorrow morning. Peace out.